no. Hey, here we go. This is old Cam. And this is not a screen shake. And we're going to give you something a little bit different than you normally don't see on the view. And that is, we're giving you a view of the ocean. Yeah, and this one's in 3D. Yeah, because we actually can get out today. There's some sunlight. And it's not tremendously bad wind today. And the movie we're talking about is Transformers. And the dark side of yeah, the moon. Yeah, are known as Transformers 3. Yeah. Because we actually, we did go to see it in 3D the first day it was out. Of, so. and, you know what, I have to tell you, that was the best 3D movie I've ever seen. Well, it looked like, okay, it, I mean, even though a lot of it was back-ended, which I assume almost all of it was back-ended, but... Uh, um, it, 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 it looked like it was meant to be in 3D and it, it has nothing to do with the action sequence that were designed for it it just has the fact that uh, the movie uh, 3D has always been well suited for anything that has action in it yeah it always has been you know you got to have things thrown at the camera so they all, the Transformers get thrown at the camera and Shayla Booth gets thrown at the camera a lot so well, you know, part of it is, is, you know, when you're shooting in 3D, here's one of the things, we were at um, one of the events, and they said that they go to events, when they do it, they said they're ready for 5D, and we're going, what's 5D? We have one 3D crew and one 2D crew, yeah. because, see, part of it is, yes, you can convert from 2D to 3D, and you can convert from 3D to 2D, Yeah. but it, it never is quite the same. So. No, but actually, if you convert from 3D to 2D using a two-lens system, it's a better 2D picture because that's yeah. what we'll back convert from 3D into 2D with our 3D camera because you get a far superior picture. So the, the movie itself was long. Yeah, it was too long. I mean, uh, okay. I enjoyed it. I'm not going to tell long. you the ending, but the oh, ending no, could have been done an hour earlier in the movie. Totally. Okay, maybe 30, 45 minutes. Yeah. Probably, uh, and you know, I don't know how much it cost them to make this movie. Uh, it cost them. There was a lot of. I think at two hundred million, I think it was, or yeah. one hundred ninety-five to two hundred. It was, it was less money than it was more than one, less than two. Well, I would expect at least about that much, but it's still about a hundred million dollars less than Green Lantern. Yeah. 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 Well, and part of it is because there are a lot of special effects. It's a long movie, and. The, yeah. the, the expectations is two hundred million dollars over the. By over Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, which is, is that what they're expecting? Yeah, which basically doesn't means it's not going to to be a countable thing compared to uh, say uh, Thor or uh, or the Pirates because it's over a six day week. So. Oh yeah, because it did actually start on what a Wednesday. Yeah. And you got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That's right. Which is an awful. So. Uh, they're figuring it's going to X out at so many dollars a day that it's going to make it open low on its first day. Well, you know, I think one of the bigger challenges is because the movie's so long, you can't have as many showings per day. That's yeah, so it's not going to make as much money. That's the whole trick. It's uh, they figure out that it's going to lose two showings a day in the theaters because of its weight. If you think about it from a viewer perspective, boy, you get a lot of money for your uh, theater dollar, though. Well, yeah, no, <laughs> but uh, I mean, what happened too is that we. Uh, we went. We actually went through an ungodly large-sized bucket of, of popcorn and two drinks while we're sitting here watching a movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a big. <laughs> that was the biggest bucket, popcorn box you were going to see. Uh, but uh, you know, the, but technically speaking, like I said, this. If you want to see how to do 3D, go look at this movie, and you're going to see how to do 3D. Yeah, it was a visual. I will say it was visual delight. It's yeah. visual entertainment. It's, it, I just loved it. I know. But, but here's part of it is if you're going there for the plot. There was no plot. Well, I mean, that's just, it's an action movie. I also put it this way. There were four sets of production companies working on that. And I can flat out tell you that Michael Bay, who was the, who was the man in charge, really didn't have a whole lot to do with the movie other than supervising action sequences that he was involved in and the action sequences were divided up among different production companies. Now what makes you say that? Well because they had no idea about what was going on in the script. I mean they had no idea what the Transformers could do or what the uh, you know what the Autobots could do versus the Decepticons. They had no idea that Megatron came here like a during the Ice Age or something well, and now know, all of a sudden a, a ship comes here in the 1960s well, you know, part of it is some of, some of you will go out there and say, well, you know, the movies are always different than the books. 
Well, this movie was different than the movie. movie. It was <laughs> yeah. different than the movies because uh, I, mean, I was talking to her. I mean, I I uh, I, I worked on a, a television series once where the, the new executive producer of the series had never actually seen the series. He had no and comprehension to what went on. So, but uh, I'm guessing because well, this was a movie by committee. So, where everybody, every individual fiefdom that was working on a picture did a certain bit, and they only give them the script that they were working with. And why would they do that? Because people will simply tell you what's me. You cannot trust them. Like, the actors will only get the script, the piece of material they're doing, and uh, the direct, you know, the, everybody gets a piece because they will let it get out in the press how everything's done so mm -hmm. so they're trying to keep a lid on it so sometimes things like this happen yeah and then like I said I figured too because there was so many different fiefdoms in it everybody expanded their own parts yeah so you know as far, far as the actors are concerned there were some surprises in here now for one thing I was not surprised that Megan Fox was not in this because they had talked about her not being in it, even though she was in the first Transformers. Yeah, and they, if you look closely at the late girl that they put in, who is a Victoria's Secret model, look at her, you know, they cast her because she looks like a young version of, um, of Cameron Diaz. Yeah, and her name is Rosie Huntington Whiteley. And yeah. she does, there are times when you think about, uh, what was it, Cameron Diaz, what did you see movie it was? Uh, Ace oh, Ventura. Ace Ventura. And, um, and mask, you know, where she was young and healthy and strong, but uh, <laughs> I can guarantee you there were uh, many, many gaps in that movie. There, actually, I can tell there was more than one movie being shot there, folks. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, there was there's a movie that we get to see, then the movie that the Europeans get to see, and then the version is going to come out, you know, on DVD. Which has got an awful lot more of Rosie showing than you actually got to see. Well, which is why they do those, so that you have a reason to buy the other one. Oh, yeah. I mean, and you can kind of see where some of those shots are going to be, like when she gets in and out of the cars. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of hard to get out of, what is it, an AMG, like, going yeah. without showing. Yeah, it'd be gracefully. And then they did hang well, on that shot. Well, they though. did hang it, you know, the camera angle itself. Yeah. I mean, let's just say the paparazzi would have loved to have gotten that camera angle for some shots for themselves. Yeah, and also, too, the, uh, the basic, I've been talking about, okay, we'll include a little bit of Steven Spielberg's Falling Star, Falling Skies. This movie, uh, Transformers, is a, is a Spielberg movie, and it basically was so cliched written that they even had, um, you know, the Leonard Nimoy in, uh, in the movie, and they're repeating, he was basically the voice of Sentinel Prime, and he was, they were repeating Vulcan sayings in the movie. I think that's kind of funny, though. I know, but the there, audience there, was there, giggling at I it. I know, so. there was humor. I mean, in some of these moments, I mean, we're not going to tell you the whole plot, but there are some things that, you know, they do some things that are so totally unexpected that just make you laugh. Yeah, and uh, there was, uh, uh, okay, well, yeah, like the free diving off of buildings in Chicago, and that, you know, that they the had... squirrel suits, the flying squirrel, squirrel suits. suits. Yeah. I mean, it's just... Um, <clears throat> but you know, if you basically, the, the, I, I, I tried to explain it. Actually, we sat for 45 minutes at the movie, and we were supposed to go out and do shooting, and we didn't. We talked about the movie instead. That um, the movie will suit fit the bill of all of those people that like the uh, A team and like the Three Stooges. You have to remember, critics could never understood why anybody liked the A team or anybody liked the Three it's Stooges. This is fun. Right. It's just fun. I know I was talking to um, one of the gentlemen yesterday who had seen the first two Transformers and then had watched the movie um, and read the book. Um, and he had basically said, you know, he said, um, I heard that the girl that they replaced Megan Fox with wasn't very good and she was getting panned. And I, I was just kind of like, look, and you thought Megan Fox could really act? I said, well, look at it this way. I said, she wasn't in the movie for her acting ability. No, I mean, this woman was in the acting movie because they made a point of featuring her chest and her legs and her butt. Other than that, you know... That's well, why she they, did look they, good. They said she that's was... That's why she was in the movie. She was playing Barbie doll to Shayla Booth's Ken. And see, part of it is it's very obvious. Yeah. Yeah. But they uh, also... There's a basic problem is that Shayla Booth became even... He became the character from Even Stevens in this movie. Why do you say that? Well, because he's, he's doing the frustrated, like the, you know, like, uh, 
the character they all had over on the Disney thing, you know, all the mugging, the, you know, the, you know, you know, I can't figure out why nobody will hire me because I'm a hero. Well, he goes in, he goes in wearing jeans and jeans to go get a job at prestigious Washington D.C. places. Well, you know, here's the, here's the part that didn't make sense is um, who John Turturro, which was in there previously, right? He was, yeah. he was the lead guy. Yeah. By the by the time he comes into this, he's very successful. Yeah. Whereas Shayla Boom comes into it, it's like he he's broke and he's living with his girlfriend. Yeah. Because nobody's supposed to know where he is. It's like no, they would have had a government job for him, and I mean. Yeah, to keep him shut up. I mean. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just like I said that whoever did this had not read the first. He, he, at least he never saw the second movie. I mean, he had no comprehension of what went on, folks. And that's the. So you, you, you do not. Uh, okay. The. Okay. I, I, I'll give you my main main. But you would have thought there wasn't be an overall script supervisor. No. I mean, that, uh, what happens is there couldn't be because you had individual fivetons putting this movie together. Ah. Uh. That's the problem. Individual company. Uh, okay. Look at the amount of producers, uh, producers and their production companies involved. I mean, they had uh, companies doing effects, companies doing modeling, companies doing 3G uh, CC type stuff. They had companies doing the green screen. Everything was done individually by individual organizations, and because of that, it caused, uh, like I said, I think what they did was each company had its own what they were supposed to do. And then they interpreted it their own way. There's no way that the director, Michael Bay, could have possibly been setting in uh, think, on all uh, of that. Here's last night. I'll give you an example of how different things are done today than they were in the past. I was watching a thing last night with Ray Harryhausen talking about the, the, the first movie he worked on was Mighty Joe Young. The guy that basically was the, uh, the real designer for King Kong sat there for a year with the people doing the effects explaining how everything oh, should really? be done. Yeah, that was the real man in charge. So, you know, did sketches to show people how it was supposed to look. He was involved with every single thing. And there's no way that Michael Bay could have been involved with every piece because it was, um, I mean, it's just like, okay, it, it works this way. My father was a second unit person, and I did a lot of second unit work when I was working. The second unit people are basically all out there on their own. They're they're doing all of these pieces that you don't want to waste the time doing the main actors to do. So they're out there shooting their stuff, and they have they have a script to work with. But generally, they got a different director. It says second unit director, and the first unit director is almost never around. So the the 3D movie was shot almost like it was a second you know second unit people on different things, and they all had, they all did it on their own. But um, I, I, do, I debate things technically, which is what we were talking about yesterday, too, is that the biggest problem with 3D is swish pans. 3D I know, you is not hate, you, you, that. you cannot move across the screen fast in 3D. Because you can hold the camera still and have the action go on around you, but, but we, when you swish it... When you swish it, what they're doing, in order to make it look like that, okay, I mean, these people are optic, optically putting in sun glares to make it look like they were outside shooting. No, you don't need to put in a sun glare. It looks, it looks ridiculous to put in a glare bouncing off of stuff coming into your face in 3D. But uh, oh, that's right. Huh? And, and a lot of their swish pans were done with the CCI, you know, the, you know, computer stuff. You don't need the swish pan when you're doing, uh, you know, a 2D to 3D, folks. It doesn't have to be done that way. And I'll give you a tip. How can you tell? The 2D to 3D stuff. Uh, well, it has to do with the fact that everything is not zoomed. It's all in focus. Front and back piece is focused because the back piece is where the animation was put in with the computer. So therefore, it's, it has to be done in focus with the front piece. So. Yeah, there are a lot of computer people that were working on oh, this. Oh God, just look at and here's another one. It has the most crappy. I mean, the end titles get worse with every 3D movie we see. You know, part of it is they put they credit so many people on those movies that I think, you know, they're more focused on being able for everybody able to read the name. I know. Okay, it goes back I mean, in my it's era. It's simple as black with white lettering. You no, know, but they didn't do that in my era. I mean, I got 1,200 appearances in my lifetime, and I didn't get credited because if you only if you're there on screen in a role, or you only spoke a line or 
or something. You were it says only main pe only main characters credited. Well, yeah, some of those old movies only have like six people credited. Yeah, and there and there was a lot of people. I mean. My father never got credit for the stuff he did. My grandmother was never credited as script supervisor. Didn't put those things down yeah, in those, those days. Yeah, those are different days. But Everybody gets credit now. No, but if you're going to spend $200 million on a movie and probably tens of millions on a title sequence, at least do a god-awful decent end, do a crawl. I mean, it's not that difficult. I can do it. <laughs> but, uh, no, but she can give you, like, you know, like I said, she's the one, you know, I have my technical qualms, but she'll have... We go and we look at movies in two different things. I look at it from somebody who's been in the, worked in it for 60 years and been in the business since 1948. I know the technical problems. I know when they're cutting corners. Actually, they didn't cut corners this time. No, actually, they didn't. Well, and I look at it from a pure entertainment perspective. Yeah. Was it fun? Were you entertained? Well, I, I like the, I mean... <laughs> I mean, I, I, I like the, uh, I, I grew up with watching the Three Stooges, so I like the Three Stooges. It, it was entertaining. I, I also loved the A-Team. I did work on the A-Team sometimes. I got to be some of those those MPs that were chasing them, which was fun, so. You know, and you know what actually surprised me? Is, you know, before we go, we, sit, we, we go to the movie, and I don't read all the reviews and all these things about it, because you, no. I, you want to form your own opinion, right? Well, I didn't read anything about okay. it. I, did, I waited until I got back and then started checking. <laughs> See if some of the people, okay, said the uh, same thing as you. Well, I mean, uh, Josh Hamill was basically walking through his role. I Tyler know, but Gibson you... was walking through his. Ty Tyrese was, Tyrese was walking through his role. Tutorial was walking through his role. Uh, the girl Rose was walking through her role. The uh, the mother and father were basically thrown in there so they could cut them out when they do the cut for the television side. I mean, they had nothing to do. Uh, Daddy's gotten fat, so. <laughs> but um, but um, there was it was everything was secondary to the Transformers. Well, they were the main star. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and here's part of it. One, of, some of the things that surprised me is number one is I was not expecting to see John Malkovich. Yeah. Or Francis um, Francis uh, McDormand. I know um, Malkovich actually was a he, he, he was sort of he, he, sometimes John Malkovich gets sort of um, Johnny Depp weird. So. <laughs> Well, and one of the biggest surprises... <laughs>